I've been doing it for th over three years now, and actually I used to update the blog every day. I mean, I'd, obviously I'd put uh, maybe between 10 and 20 uh, links a day. But lately, I mean, I think it's last autumn, I can kind of realize that, I, I mean, I don't need to do it every day. And also, I need to I need to concentrate more on my own photography, because I want to, you know, I, I'm still in the very early stages of my own photograph photography career. I found like Twitter to be really, really useful because I used to um, go to loads of different sites every day, Magnum, Seven, Nor, Time, New York Times, Guardian, BBC, check if there is in, in certain their photo blogs, if there's stories I would like, news stories that I'm interested in. But now actually I would say I find like 90% of the stuff that I share on the blog through Twitter. So what I usually do, I just check my timeline on Twitter every day or, if, or, or in the evening I just go through the whole day backwards and then I keep kind of fa marking the ones that I like and then I sit, then take time later to go through them all <clears throat> and then um, and see which ones I eventually put on the put on the, uh, the blog. I had a couple of friends and, and we were all always changing links. I found this on the photo aid. I found this amazing multimedia magnum site or whatever. And then um, then I started putting it online because I thought um, you know. My friends could go there and then I could also use that for myself, really. I didn't plan it. I mean, I, did, I didn't at the time envision that it could be... It could be a thing, actually, the loads of... Now it's like over 30,000 visits a month. It's crazy how to realize, actually, that some of those heroes... Some of my heroes, actually, have, are following the blog and, and, and um, looking at it. Definitely, I think I think the biggest education for myself has been looking at this in, immense amount of photography. When you, I think, I think I've learned the most by looking at other people's work. And when I continue to do that every day, uh, I continue learning. Uh, I used to work in a library when I was just doing photography, and actually, it, I didn't have much to do. I had this kind of Saturday, funny Saturday shift that I was there kind of guarding the university library. But that was a library where we had all the photography books, so I spent all my days oh, that was uh, great. looking at these books and I even all asked the university to order certain books that I wanted. And, and then, unfortunately, I don't have that same access to um, photography books anymore because I'm not in the university. But um, I keep learning by looking at all these incredible photography um, that's out there. One obvious answer is, is James Nathwe. I mean, he was one of the. I mean, everybody loved him, I think, and, and he was one of the reasons why I became really interested in photojournalism in the first place. Because I was doing studying politics and international relations, and I had been taking photos just for myself on holidays and all that. But um, one of my friends showed me the war photography movie, and that really that really um, kind of gave impressed me, you. yeah, it really impressed me and then I, 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 only then, I was in my last year of, of um, on the BA, Politics and International Relations, the Relations course and I then actually was, when I was thinking, like, what, what am I, I'm going to graduate this summer, what am, am I going to do with my life and then actually I started considering photography as what I want to do and then um, I think James Nathway was, <laughs> one of the inspirations there, but I think overall, excuse me, um, I I love photographers who kind of keep the post-production to minimum. I think if you're serious about photography and you want to you want to become better photographer, you have to you have to look at a lot of work and and not just kind of browse through a book or a magazine, but really um, take time looking at those images. I think out of the work I've done, I, um, the, the one project that I've loved the most, I think, it was when I, when I when I was still studying in Swansea, 
um, I went to Sierra Leone for, mm -hmm. for Finnish Refugee Council, it's an NGO helping um, internally displaced people <coughs> in post-conflict post -conflict countries and I was there traveling for a one month and really immersed myself in the world. I think it's a great idea, I saw it's Kickstarter, I think um, we need new ways of funding for quality photojournalism and it, it's in, it's quite incredible the amount of money even emphasis was I think launched like just over a week ago and I, I think 15, I thousand yeah yes yeah yesterday I saw this um, I think it was even twenty thousand dollars yeah like pro probably eight days or something like this incredible so which is I think it's great um, but I'm a bit skeptical as to how how Will it work in long term? Like, will people still be interested in, in emphasis? Obviously. Why? Um, well, now everybody's talking about it, and people are keen on putting money, and which is um, great. But then, and I ho hope it works. But then, at the same time, the, it's a new thing, so I don't. Uh, so people will get bored easily. Will, yeah, or, or the, will they? Or will there be? Will people be eager? I, will they learn to this? Will they learn this new way of kind of consuming or participating in in uh, in, in, in in the making of, of quality photojournalism? Photo I mean, it's hard to pinpoint why I'm so skeptical, and, and I don't want to sound like negative, you know, too negative about it. But um, we'll see. But um, I think the first first few months, uh, it, it seems like it. It's, it's, it has seemed very promising. To get more work, hopefully. I mean, I'm still start. I only really uh, became professional in the sense that I stopped doing any other part-time jobs uh, last autumn or end of last summer. Um, when I moved to Brighton, I started getting work from Finnish publications because I was near, near, near closer to London, and then. But then, even most of those assignments that I got, they were in London, so I thought I might as well be here, um, so that hopefully that would make me even more assignable, is that a word? Um, and it's looking promising now, um, and I, obviously, I, I, and I haven't really broken into the uh, UK uh, media market, so I'm hoping that uh, being in London, um, I can get to kind of network better, meet people. In, um, and, and hopefully also start getting work from um, UK publications and other international publications. I've spent, I've now I've been in London just over a week and I've spent like most of my days just emailing everybody or calling people like I'm here I'm and, here. and hopefully it'll pick I'm up. I'm in town. I'm in town, yeah exactly because I know I mean there's a, I mean there must be thousands of photographers in London. Yeah. The competition is fierce and there's less work and the, the work there, that there is is less paid than before, but uh, I'm willing to give it a go. And, and, and if no, nobody's in photography, in photojournalism, for the money, because if you really after the money, you do, you're going to do something else. So it's a passion. That's what I want to do. And but I need to make a living, obviously. And, and uh, but it's I, I'm very optimistic and hopeful, and it's it's looking good already, uh, looking better than than, than in being in Brighton. So.